Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again for yet another Marvel Action Hour video. Today it comes courtesy of my friends over at Diamond Select. We have a look at three of their brand new Marvel Select 7-inch action figures. First and foremost being everyone's favorite vampire hunter, Blade. The, the vampire hunter, of course. Looking very... Wesley Snipes-ish, also very comic booky, right? They've kind of taken that to the extreme, right? And that's really all I see now for Blade. It's Wesley Snipes. Designed by Yuri Taming, sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. You're going to read up on old Eric Brooks here. On the X-Men side of things, Bobby Drake makes his Marvel Select debut for Iceman. And I remember I revealed this some time ago, so it's nice to have the figure in hand, very cool to see him. No pun intended, of course. On the back side of the packaging, nice little write-up, nice photos of said Iceman figure and his accessories. He was designed by Eamon O'Donoghue and sculpted by May Tham Tarana. And then, of course, number three out of four for the old Fantastic Four, Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. And this one... Really looking forward to it. I like all the little swap out parts, pieces, and powers, right? Same thing as the back, like all the other figures. And you can read up on these. Designed by Yuri Taming and sculpted by May Tham Tarana. Way to go, guys. Very well done. So, this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Diamond Select Marvel Select. Mr. Fantastic, Iceman, and Blade part of the Marvel Action Hour. And while I got all you Excelsiors here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube videos. Now, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates, guarantee you'll find something here that you'll like. Marvel, DC, it all's the same, right? So, here's everything out of the box. All the twisty ties. You get to a lot of different parts and pieces for all of these action figures, which I love to see, especially at the $30 mark. Now, with Iceman, you get his X-Factor belt. So you have swap-out belts. It's nicely painted. It applies just like a belt would, right? And it looks pretty darn good. Now, one of the big aspects of this Iceman is all the effect pieces and... The fact that it's clear plastic, it has a little bit of a white shading to it, and it's like a blue-white plastic, which is awesome. Especially when you get it as fixed to his arm, he's throwing out ice projectiles all over the place. That looks killer. Well done. Now, the best part is, is that it comes with extra powers and abilities, like how I would see Iceman using his abilities, right? So, that's great to see. Who'd have thunk it, right? Superhero toys uh, having powers and abilities. And just as the ice spikes, each of these, one short, one long, looks great. From the crystal clear hand, shooting at all the ice with the blues and white accents, it looks great. Unfortunately, though, because it's hinged, it's a little bit too heavy for his hand. Now, they do give you these old school Diamond Select standees, right? Now, I'm not a huge fan of these but it does help alleviate some of the weight. So both of these will plug from the base into the power effect and uh, it gets him all steady because yeah, it's an unfortunate heavy power effect. The smaller one, not so much if you get it at the right angle, but the larger effect, yes, way too heavy at the joint, unfortunately. Now, with the extra head portraits, you get some cool slick back Bobby Drake ice action. It's got minimal paint right there. I do wish they could have done a little bit more just to kind of bring out the details just a tad, right? So you could see it. And then of course, the Iceman base, which is amazing. When was the last time you saw a base like this? Marvel Legends Toy Biz days, right? They used to come packed standard in the boxes, right? But the sculpts, the paint, the dry brush, so to speak, the white crackliture, the blues... That looks like a giant mound of ice come to life controlled by Iceman. If I had to nitpick it at all, I wish it could have been a little bit bigger, right? But where the pegs are for him to stand on it, I wish you could have moved those around somehow, some way, right? You can totally get him a going and standing 
just right with the articulation scheme that they got going on with his Iceman. So he does look great. That's his powers brought to life. They nailed it. It looks pretty darn cool. As far as the figure itself, though, oh yeah, we still have to talk about that, right? There's a lot in the box. You get the bald version of Iceman. You get his X-Men belt. It's totally cool. Completely clear ice cube of a figure. I love that. The blues, the whites, everything brings it to life. You can kind of sort of see the parts and pieces that make up the figure inside, which is kind of cool. He does have a white shade to him on his hands and on his feet. Little snowy particle effect. I totally dig that. The belt, just like the other one, comes right off. I'll take it off and leave it off so you can see the articulation where at the waist, you can move him around. At the head, you can move him around and get him going left and right, up and down. Plenty of momentum in the neck and in the head. So that's cool to see. But it just looks like you're handling an ice cube. And I think that if you're going to do an Iceman figure, yeah, you have to really have it look like that. Bicep swivel, single jointed elbows, spins at the elbows. And then, of course, you have the swap out hands and you have some wrist articulation as well. So everything works in that sense. One thing to kind of point out, though, is that in the arms and as you'll soon see more towards the feet, he can be kind of loose sometimes. So that's just something that eh, needs to be worked on here and there. It may not be on your figure. For the legs, he's got thigh swivel. He'll kick all the way up, right? That looks pretty cool. The fact that he's got thigh, not too shabby. Single joint of knees, rotate the knee, and he'll rock at the feet up, down, left, right. So plenty of articulation for this really cool X-Man. Just don't forget to at least put a belt on the guy, right? You don't want him naked. Now, with the other figures in this group, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Blade. Now, Blade does come with some extra hands. The hands aren't really that much different, mostly for holding guns and weapons, to be honest with you. The extra head portrait is more of a solemn face, less snarly, but I like that the glasses are already applied. That's a nice touch, right? Blade himself. Look at them all fanged out right there. Or... At least I would have preferred just a little bit more fang action. It's more so just baring his teeth. To be honest, I prefer Blade to have a little bit more vampire teeth to him, right? He has to control that bloodlust. That's his whole character. Now, with the face portrait, that's very cool. Again, like I said, halfway between comic book and Wesley Snipes. How we all know blade at this point right he does not have a leather jacket which is totally cool you get to see a lot of his weapons which he has storage for every single one and i just want to point that out that that is awesome from his sword which is elegantly done kind of looks like the sword from blade to be honest with you he holds that really nicely and i think that's where a few more hands would have come in handy for this figure he has this big old essentially vampire stake right kind of like a, a prong weapon at this point that looks cool right nice silver black to it that fits into the holster he does have his weapon that's pretty much from the blade movie right in the opening scene he tosses it cuts a bunch of vampires down that's pretty cool totally dig that folds up and it goes right onto his belt he has an extra magazine right here ammo that looks pretty cool as well. That would have been cool if it plugged into something, right? That would have been awesome. Like one of his big old guns there. Now, he does have holsters for this big old knife. That's nicely painted, nicely done. Has little spikes all over it as well. And he has his big gun on the other side of his leg holster. So, there you go. It actually looks like you could plug in an effect piece if you have them. Let's say from Marvel Legends. Now, right here... Up top, he does have a holster on his side right there for this particular weapon. That's painted nicely. But unfortunately for this gun, you cannot get the finger on the trigger. It just doesn't hold properly, right? That's a bit of a bummer. But it does slip in nicely to the holster. You have various vampire stakes all in a row right here. Those are not removable. Those just stay on his leg. The armor pieces, the paint... The leg holster, everything looks great. Everything's painted on this guy. So they did a fantastic job. And for the most part, all the weapons leave the figure unhindered when you want to articulate him. The head moves fairly well, up, down, left, right. The arms go a little bit south in the degree that you want to move them. They only go out to the certain side right there. They'll go all the way up. He's got bicep. He's got single jointed elbow. They'll rotate the elbow. And he has wrist articulation as well. Now, 
right here in the abdomen, he doesn't really have much of an ab crunch. It sort of just kind of rocks to and fro. Not so much an ab crunch, but he does have a bit of a waist swivel to him. The legs will kick out more so than up, we'll just say. There's enough articulation to meet your needs, I think, right? Unless you want to go full on Marvel Legends, but this is a whole new different type of articulation scheme. And he has thigh swivel. He's got single jointed knees, right? Those will spin. And he also has thigh articulation as well as the feet that go up, down, and rock side to side. So again, not a bad articulated figure for Diamond Select's Marvel Select line. Now to finish it out, we have my favorite of the three. All good things wait till the end, right? Mr. Fantastic here comes with a couple extra hands. More so, kind of sort of a shaking hand, Spock kind of thing, right? He's got his hello waving hand, sure. And then he has a trigger hand, but that's more for the ultimate nullifier, I would say, if anything. Speaking of which, you get the ultimate nullifier. And just as the original Marvel Legends release looks the exact same, and he can hold it every which way, right? You got an open hand, he can definitely hold this sucker. Now, my favorite, though, is that you get the extendo pieces. And you need these for a figure character like Mr. Fantastic. So he can do the long punch, right? Right from across the room. He's got the grabby hand. He needs a beaker, right? He's concocting all kinds of weird potions in his laboratory. He needs to reach across the room and, and grab it. I'm just making this up as I go here, right? He's got this big old extendo neck. Get your mind out of the gutter there. And he has an extendo torso, which is awesome, right? So that, let's say he's at Target and he needs to look up on the top shelf. Now he just simply stretches up there, easy peasy. Or you can get him all kinds of cronenberg out. And that is just an awesome looking figure right there. Well done. I love all these attachment pieces. But one of the coolest, <laughs> which I think works and doesn't work at the same time, right? Is this giant Mr. Fantastic Beer Cozy right so to speak and it has a little peg up there it's supposed to be that he's wrapped himself around an enemy and as you can see yeah it does come across as such for the most part i think that i may have to tell someone what it's doing right a lot of people may look at that and go oh is that what he does right well yeah and i think that once you get a figure in there i think it becomes a lot more oh okay i i see what you're going for so you can wrap around old dr doom right there and subdue dr doom he looks very uncomfortable to be honest with you i think that once you see it from the side it's a lot more like all right i get where you're going it's 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 the full-on wrappings you see how his legs and everything else is wrapped around so not too shabby at all. I like that thinking outside the box you got there, Diamond Select. From the actual figure itself, minus all the attachments, minus all the extra powers, it's a great looking Reed Richards. I gotta give it to him. It's just very cool, very nostalgic for this costume. I like the sculpted in four on his chest. That's a nice touch. You have the Polly Walnut's hair going all the way around. I totally dig that. Nice overall head sculpt on this guy. That is reed richards even though i will say the head sculpt might be a tad oversized but not too much where i'm gonna say yeah it's oversized you know what i mean it's kind of sort of now you get head articulation and you get neck articulation because you have those adjoining pieces which you can do the super stretchy neck and i like that for the most part you get him left and right not so much looking up though that's one thing you can use the abdomen to kind of get him going looking up a little bit better but I wish that could have been a little bit better in the actual head. The arms, not too shabby at all, just like all the other figures. Single jointed elbows. They rotate at the elbow. He's got bicep. He's got the wrist. So not too much of a differentiation between all three figures with the articulation scheme. But they're all original sculpts. They look great. Thigh swivel on Mr. Fantastic, right? Go easy on a few of these. I'm just going to point that out. You may want to heat it up. If it doesn't budge, didn't really have any problems myself. But once you learn the articulation, I think you'll be in better shape. Because overall, yeah, it's just a really fun Mr. Fantastic figure. Especially when you start pulling all the parts and pieces off. So, Mr. Fantastic is definitely my favorite. I like all the weapon storage that Blade has. Bobby Drake Iceman. It's a great figure, but there's just a couple hinders here and there. But largely, 
they make for some really fun toys. Now, for those of you out there going, wow, these are fun. Oh, man. How are they going to fit with my Marvel Legends? Marvel Select, when it comes to normal characters, do not fit with Marvel Legends. They're too big. The larger characters definitely do. No, Diamond Select, Marvel Select is more in the McFarlane era, 7-inch scale, right? So, Marvel Legends, 6-inch, Diamond Select, 7-inch. However... I will say it can kind of go the opposite where the more larger type Marvel Legend figures can definitely fit with Diamond Select, vice versa. And you can use that little cozy to wrap around a Galactus and that just makes for a really cool display. So I totally dig the wrappy thing. Well done. I really like that. So that's going to wrap it up for my look at three of the brand new Diamond Select Marvel Select offerings. Iceman, Blade, and Mr. Fantastic. All pretty great figures in their own regard. The fact that they're 30 bucks, they all come with powers, weapons, abilities, they nailed it. This is what I want to see. Articulation aside, these are great figures because they do what the characters do. And that's what I want to see in my toys but you've heard my thoughts now i'm curious to know yours comment below let me know let's talk everything marvel select and thank you again to diamond select for sending these out for the purposes of this video and i'm gonna leave you guys with that as always drink some great coffee eat some great food but most importantly remember bring on that annihilus baby i cannot wait to see how that figure turns out and when they do let me know what you found i'll talk to you guys soon adios